cast. Hello, cast. Hello. Hello. Is everyone? I everyone's here and accounted for. <laughs> yes. Fan flippin' tastic. All right. Who's ready for? Clear. Who's ready for everyone's favorite beginning of the stream tradition? The sentence oh, game. Fuck. Oh, fuck yeah, here we go. Yeah! The sentence game! Oh, boy. Okay, so the or order, as usual, is Scorch, Blue Moon, and then Howl. Uh, I give the first word, and then you guys can keep building the sentence from there. Are we ready? The word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you, Graham! <laughs> I believe in you! Okay. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Do. You. Wish. We. Were. A. Happy. Family. Yes! <laughs> Do you wish we were a happy family? <laughs> First <Yeah>. try! <laughs> Woo! Do you wish we were a happy family? <laughs> I don't know. That was really good. You guys want to do another one? No. <laughs> uh, I feel like we, you know, we could leave it. No, let's do it. Let's do it. No, no, take a victory. Okay, fine. Victory. Jeez. Yes, get these often, okay? <laughs> I mean, just survive. I mean, you beat the dryad. That wasn't hard. She was a little preoccupied. Well, actually, I guess it was pretty hard, but like. <laughs> you beat the bandits. Listen. The only, the only people, the only person you haven't defeated thus far is Dandy Jack. And hey, we got close. Pretty close, yeah. <laughs> Little really, really the box like a boomerang. <laughs> uh, okay, so a little bit of a recap. <clears throat> Last time on Royals of Paternia, our heroes were crestfallen at the loss of the Crown Princess Arya. We found her. Transfig transmogrified into a pile of jade, partially by a ancient dwarven curse, and partially by massive explosion. <laughs> the kingdom grieved, but ceremonies still needed to be uh, held. There was a big party, dinner party, to bring forth the oracles, uh, oracles prophecy for the reign of King David the Fifth. Heir to the throne. And when all seemed to calm down, a shooting star lit up the sky, which landed in the harbor of Paternia. And from the shooting star came a mechanical turtle, an enormous mechanical turtle. And let me just refresh for the chat here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. The man, the myth, the legend, who strolled his sexy old ass out of the turtle. The wizard Malachite. <laughs> uh, I think I have music for this. Hold on. What, which, what, what was it? it was, uh, okay, yes. <clears throat> Before you stands Malachite. A mysterious man who has just made his name known to you. That is loud in my ears. I am sorry. Uh... No, let's keep it for now. Uh, you four, our heroes, uh, can study his face from this distance and... He gazes upon you, and in his eyes, there's a flicker of remembrance. He's remembering things, but you have no idea what it is. What it is he's remembering. I'm sorry. Um, I don't think uh, I need to ask this. Uh, David pipes up, and he says, uh, Do you have a permit to park here? Well, um... Let me see. Let me... And he, he rummages around in his cloaks. Uh, and... And pants that are male. <laughs> He's got plate mail. 
pants for some reason and sandals which is i think I'll, let's be honest that is that is the fantasy version of socks and sandals plate mail and sandals plate mail and sandals <laughs> wonderful and he goes looking around and he says uh well uh no i don't have a goddamn permit did you see me just appear here with this gigantic iron turtle i'm afraid i'm gonna have to ask you to move it then sir mr malachite was it very well and then he raises his staff up and strikes the floor of the mouth of the turtle the eyes of the turtle glow a brilliant green and from its rear a chute opens up and unfolding from the rear is a gigantic balloon it fills up and arcs towering over everyone and just fills up with with air there's a, a floating ring of fire beneath it that it assume, presumably is heating it all up and slowly the turtle rises Malachi looks down at all of you and says, Tell fa our f your father that I will be meeting with him soon. And with that, he floats off over the city towards Castle Paternia. What do you do? Do you think that was a threat, or is he expected? I mean... We were not told of any sort of events happening, and I, feel I don't like think that's a pretty uh, grand entrance. That's, I, I don't think anyone is expecting him at all, um, as he appeared in a giant turtle. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. well, this day sure just gets weirder and weirder, and more shit for us to have to deal with. Yeah, we we should uh head back to the castle. Just call it yeah. night. Say, call it a night. I mean, may maybe. Well, if we go back to the castle and, you know, let... Figure out what's going on there, we can probably... Use this advantage to do some investigating that we previous have talked about. I... I... I it's don't... a good distraction. Anyway, we should probably I head away. I'm so back. tired. This whole day has been just so much. Now you don't figure oh, out your sister's dead. It's yeah. pretty hard. Mm. Oh, if you want to go rest, great prince, we know you need your beauty sleep to be functional <laughs> on any degree. So. Shut your trap. <sighs> I think. I, so here's what I'm thinking. Um. Giant flying mechanical turtle and crazy wizard dude take precedent over. Uh, one measly cat. Everyone else thinking the same thing? Yeah. One is a one is a matter of national security. One is a personal grudge. Well, yeah. to be fair, I think both of them are a matter of national security. You, you know what? You make an excellent a... you make an excellent <laughs> point. Um, <laughs> hmm. So how I about think, we head back yeah. to the castle and check? At the very least, at the very least, I mean, me at the very least, me and Blue should at, we go go back to the castle. Not that not that you guys aren't set. Not that you got, not that you two aren't fit for uh, this oh, kind of go. talk. Careful, you might dig yourself another hole like last time. Giant turtle <laughs> seems a bit more imperative. Yeah, as much as I don't want to admit it, I am very curious about you this. You are very curious. Oh. We are all very curious. You know what? You know what? I know a quaint coffee spot not far from here. Uh, you guys want coffee? No, I want to go back to the castle. There's a giant mechanical turtle just- I know there's a giant mechanical turtle! Are you stalling? I- Because you seem like you're stalling more than anything, Great Prince. That guy gave me the weirdest look. Did you see the look he gave me? The weirdest exactly, look. Exactly, and he's probably yes. going to give your father a weirder look, and do you want him to wound up dead? I mean- Either of them? Yeah. I'm just well, either of our fathers to end up dead, or your mother for a god bit, or anyone else in the castle, just because some mechanical dude said, I'm gonna go meet with your father and we're not gonna follow up on that. Instead, we're gonna go for a fucking coffee shop ride and go, you're right, Prince. This was so much greater of an idea. I really I needed just, my Americano right I now. just, I'm suggesting that we should all be fresh and 
personally right now, I need a coffee to remain fresh to deal with national security measures. I'm so sorry, my great blue bitch of a brother. I'm sure Willen will be happy to whenever we get back to the castle. You know what? He makes a better coffee than that place anyway. Okay, let's go. Okay, there we go. You guys Ooh, pass to the- I on something. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> to the castle. Okay, so you guys, <laughs> you guys pass through the crowd. Um, you are escorted by the mages that were there. In the cast, casting light, you're escorted there because you know mages. They're they're, they're cool. And you make it back to the castle. Um, all the while, you guys uh, keep staring at the the looming gigantic turtle that is apparently now part blimp. Um, yes, I love when my mechanical turtle is part blimp. <laughs> that's like. Like, it's really the big. It's the seller for me when I go to the shop and say I'd like to buy one mechanical turtle. Yes, one like, mechanical turtle, please. Make sure it's like, part <laughs> blimp. Like I don't know, the blimp part is kind of what you know makes it a good mechanical. And you know, blimp. and you know, sometimes, sometimes they try to sell you on um, also being part submarine, and like <laughs> you think that would just come with being a turtle. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. pay extra for something that should just exactly. come with it. Obviously, it, it's, uh -huh. it's ludicrous. Uh -huh. <laughs> the conversation. You guys are having this high. You guys are having this very exaggerated conversation as you enter the castle once again. Um, you make it to uh, one of the one of the. You make it to the the the. You make it back to the the the. The dining room, the main uh, hallway, the main room where all the dig dignitaries are still. Hobnobbing and snobbing, although there is a big, uh, a big crowd looking over the, look, uh, gathered around the balcony where the turtle has reparked itself. <clears throat> and you <laughs> enter the dining room, uh, shortly before, uh, Malachite steps down from the turtle onto the railing of the balcony and then onto the balcony, uh, causing a ripple effect through the crowd of dignitaries. Uh, as they are not, they are as they are afraid to touch the strange man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I've come to uh, seek audience with the Tri Crown. My name is Malachite. Um, please get the, uh, away from me farther than you've already gravitated away from me. Thank you, please, and thank you. Shoo, 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 and he starts uh, jabbing at the dignitaries with his with his uh, with his staff. Be gone. Go. Go on. Yep. Um, excuse me, you can't just go talking to the people of our court over here like this. Who are you and why are you here? Um, Blue Moon just shuffles his way through the crowd. If you haven't noticed, I'm a very powerful mage. Okay, the last time I checked, that wasn't any written paperwork on who you are and why you're doing inside of our kingdom unannounced. <clears throat> well, you know what? You know what? He places a hand on you. That's absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. Um, to prove who I am, I must merely speak to your mother. Um, excuse me, what? I have to speak to your- I have to- I have to talk to your mom about my identity. Mom, are you- sure that will be organized wherever she is. She's- but hasn't moved, but she is watching everything from her uh, seat at, her seat at the table. There we go. Um, as uh, Malachite's head turns and lays eyes for the first time on uh, the tri crown, he gets that same um, look in his eyes, like he's remembering something. His eyes dart back and forth a little bit, um, and this time his face, uh, you can. You can divine notes of melancholy in his being as he lays eyes on the tri crown. Um, yes, of course, tri crown. What's up? Ah, I I have to speak to the queen um shortly. Just just not just no wizard wizard talk. You know what I mean, your highness. Um. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no. Guards, get this man. You know what? I probably should have seen this coming. And he holds his wrist out and he gets cuffed. Well, that was easy. He just barged into a royal 
Also, what, what were you expecting? Oh, you were always the smart ass, weren't you? Wizards. How would you know? Take me away! I'm a crazy madman! Huzzah! Uh, Careful, he's a wizard. And he gets dragged away. He gets dragged away. Um, he, well, uh, he, 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 he uh, handed his staff to one of the dignitaries just, just because he needed to be disarmed. I'm a crazy madman. I am a wizard. I showed up in a giant flying turtle. Fear me! Ah! And he gets uh, dragged away. Uh, and, and so we're definitely visiting him later. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, David goes and takes the, the wizard staff from one of the dignitaries, um, and then walks to his dad's and his mom. Can this day just end, please? <laughs> I'm so tired, guys. Well, if you want to go to bed, he's dealt with now. Uh, yeah, I'm like you seem very exhausted. All look very exhausted, especially you, though. You look very, very, very tired. You know what, my boy? You know what? Yeah. Well, um, honey, I suppose you want to look at the staff and also the, the turtle. You know what? I'm also exhausted. I'm I'm going to bed. And then she's gone. Uh, magic. You know, super cool stuff. Very, very long day. You know what? Yes. We will, we will get a fresh look at... Everything when uh when the sun rises. Goodness, I'm also tired. <clears throat> Tiberius, do you want to be little spoon or big spoon tonight? Dads, <clears throat> for the love of God. And uh, David storms away. <laughs> He's storming away to bed. And you guys are the the kings uh follow suit and also go to the direction of their chambers. And you guys are. Left with a bunch of dignitaries, but they are starting to trickle out as well. Oh, this worked out better than I could have imagined. The prince is going to sleep. Both the king and the queen are dealing with something differently. And no one will be any of the wiser of our... ...lands. Infiltration of our own dungeon? I think we're allowed down there. Oh, you wanted to go talk to the dude. Fair enough. Yeah. I thought we were gonna enact plan to go out and you know figure out. Uh, shit, no. It's time to do both. Well, yeah, we could go. Oh, yeah, you're right. We do have an entire night's worth. Do you guys want coffee? It's Will and Grace. Oh yes. Yes, we would love some coffee. Could you bring it down to the prisons? We'll be going down there shortly. Why would you want to go down there? Uh, we have someone we get... to talk to. We have a lot of prisoners to check up in, and as part of our royal duties. Oh. Well, I guess they're Thank giving you. you kids new chores every day. Okay, yeah, I'll bring it to you guys. Don't worry. And he Thank goes. He, so he goes off to the kitchen. And off to the dungeons. All right. You guys, you guys, mosey down corridor and stairway, uh, down halls. And you make your way to the murky depths of the dungeon where there are petty thieves, non-petty thieves, judgmental thieves, um, some tax fraud people. Uh, da, 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 da. There's this one guy who um, his only crime technically is indecent exposure uh, because he kind of made shop in the marketplace with like only... A wooden tub for shelter. He had a habit of just defecating and peeing everywhere. Um, so there's that guy. He's kind of smells, uh, but that's why he's locked up because of just just generally being gross is what he's uh, charged for. And finally, at the end of the row, in a it's a fairly clean, cl fairly clean cell because it hasn't really been used. It's clean by dungeon standards. There's not a lot of filth. And by filth, I mean defecant, because it's, it's, it's a nice, clean, there he is. Old man, robes, green hair, various shades of green, sick goatee, uh, chain mail, plate mail, um, plate mail pants, and sandals. Again, that is just peak weird. 
Uh, and he's... He doesn't seem bothered. He's chained to the wall, but he's also sitting on the cot. Uh, but he, he's not hes not really bothered. Uh, and he sees you approach, but he doesn't say anything. Quite the fashion statement. I, I, I like to think I did my best with uh, what I was given. You know, there was a very much easier way to do this, right? I don't know. Flying up there seemed... It, it was actually very easy and time efficient. And no. you know what? I was also kind of a little sleepy, so... Free bed! Don't you... have a bed on your giant turtle? I mean, I, I, mean, I do... But I kind of, uh, I, I let's be, I'm gonna be completely honest. And he, he he leans really far as far forward as he can with the chains on his on his arms. I got a little carried away in the moment, and then he leans back. So there's that. So there's that. Ah, so he's a drama queen. So what do you guys want? Doing here. Yeah. What what am I doing? I. Mm, Oh, uh, I kind of want to discuss it with your parents first. Well, they don't want to see you, so we can speak they will. on their behalf. They will. Uh-huh, you sure about that? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be too surprised if you get put up for execution for intruding the castle like this. Oh, I won't. I because I know where Dandy Jack is. Oh. Uh. Excuse and how me? do we know we can trust that you know that? I came in a giant flying turtle. Literally, I can't say anything weirder than that. I suppose, but that doesn't make you omnipotent. Well, I can give you a location, and if he's there, you can trust me, right? Mm. Yes, we could. Okay. okay, you poncy green fuck. You're gonna tell us <gasps> everything that you know about Dandy Jack. Okay. Go Scorch. Go Scorch. So, Go Scorch. Dandy Jack is a um, he's a swashbuckler type rogue. Uh, his signature weapon is a crystal pistol. He is a calico tabaxi. He is a Gemini. Um, his birthstone. We don't need to know any of that. Okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I want to know. Okay. <sighs> I can't. I can't remember his birthstone. I'm sorry. Um, he has a birthmark on his left f left foot paw, in the shape of a star. Um, and then he uh, let's see. He pre he prefers IPAs over any other kind of beer. He won't touch wine. I don't know why. He just he gives off the vibe of a wine drinker. Is anyone else getting that vibe? Anyone well, else catch that, catch that vibe from him? Whiskey to me. Okay. A well, actually, in confidence, he told me that he's a he's a rum man, but he didn't want to look like a stereotype. Wait, you've talked. He with didn't. Him? He he didn't want to look Are like a stereotype. So he. With him. So. That's what he said about rum. He didn't want to act like a stereotype, so he he, he will order IPA, but he won't turn down rum. Let's, oh, let's see. He is his. Him. His second cousin. We didn't ask about his second cousin. How has lost lost an him? eye of when um Tandy so Jack was talking to him wasn't going to be helpful. When he was learning how to use his oh, crystal sure, pistol, man. he shot out his second cousin's eye, and that was a very formative moment for him. Almost as formative as the time where his tail got singed by your your reflective attack. Um he doesn't know exactly what happened. He, he he's calling it BS, but his tail got singed. And um, uh, anything else you need to know? How do you know him? Uh, <laughs> I, I can't really tell you that just yet. I can't tell. I can't tell you how I know him. I oh, mean, you, you will. Could. You very much. I can could. tell you. You want us to trust you? Do you not? I can tell you. He's at the drooling boar. Right now. Okay, that's information we can use. Thank you. Okay. Drooling boar currently, and how do you know he'll be there currently? 
Because I've seen him there. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Honestly, I feel like we should just leave this to our parents to figure out. Let's go. We have what we need. Yeah, we wanted the cat. We don't need you. Have fun. <sighs> He's not staying there. Well, is he going to be there by the time we would get there, since you seem to be so informative of everything? Yeah, he had a... Pl he had when when I when I saw him, he had a ticket on the next bus out. The ne not a bus. That's that doesn't exist yet. <sighs> oh, he had a ticket for the next ferry off uh, on a boat to the Misty Mountains across the ocean. So we were in the right place, and you fucking distracted us. Mm hmm. Well, that's not... Where? Good. I can't remember. Where is the dueling boar again? You said he was going on the ferry. That's by where you landed. Uh, hmm. Anyway, that's not of importance to get upset about. Whatever. You see, if he's going to be getting on the ferry, how much time until he gets on the ferry? Wouldn't it leave in the morning? That would be the most logical time to leave. Okay, so we can catch him now. Let's go. Seems good. Okay. Adieu to you, and hopefully you have better time with our parents. You two are sure that it is safe to leave this man with our parents. I mean, yes. He seems well enough. Sure, really, he seems sure. to be more of another oracle, like great-grandmother of the house. Oh, okay, he seems that way, but what if he's telling us lies? You won't know. If Auntie thinks he's safe down here, then he should be good. I entrust the royal parents to treat <clears throat> him well. Obviously, they would have been more worried about him if they actually thought he posed a threat. Tick tock. Anyway, yeah, yeah we should be getting but going. Get out of here. Yeeting. I'm done talking to him. Time is a tool to put on the wall or where it's on the list. The Jesus past Christ. is far behind us. The future doesn't exist. He's actually singing this to you guys. Mm. Yes, it, let, let's go. Come on. Okay, yes, let's... We go. Hold on, let me find a picture of Dandy Jack again. Let me find oh. Dandy Jack's picture again, just in case. It's been like two whole episodes since we saw him. We've probably forgotten what our, our, our dearest... Evil cat boy, oh, Andy Jack. I know like. what my nemesis looks like. I have pictures of him up on my wall with daggers through. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, I have to take that picture. Risque. <laughs> <laughs> There's the man. Dandy Jack. There's already porn of him? Shit. No. There's 34 not of against him. everything. <laughs> We don't have a fan base big enough to make porn that fast. Come on. Uh, no, I would I... if I was any good at digital. <laughs> <laughs> That's a challenge for viewers. That they're challenging you. <laughs> First one to make Dandy Jack smut wins. Say. Wins our affection. Oh no! <laughs> Corporate wait. Corporate magician just said I'm. I, I got it. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I expect this in any of the 18 plus chats. Let's okay, go. Okay, you guys gonna you guys gonna go leave the dungeon? Yes. Now as leave. you pass Okay, as you pass the entrance to the dungeon, you you spy a wanted poster for Dandy Jack. And what oh. we're going to do is we're going to do a match cut and the same position ma match cut from the poster to actual Dandy Jack living it up at the drooling boar. Jack, 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 Jack. He's dancing on tables, uh, firing his crystal pistol into the air with glee. This is the, this is a good day for Dandy Jack. I want to grab my stealth cloak before we leave. You have Just... a stealth cloak. <laughs> I call it my stealth cloak, but it's just like a regular okay. cloak. It's just. I, that's cloak. yeah. That's the, I needed to know the difference. Yeah, I needed to, to be different. I needed to know that it's not actually a cloak yeah, of stealth. Yeah, I don't have an enchanted. What item. you mean? Yes, it is a cloak of stealth. It's nope. in the name. Jeez, goon daddy. That's what the tag says. 
Tag says it's super, super good at being super duper stealthy for realsies. <laughs> anyway, you see Dandy Jack living it up at the, oh, yes. uh, at the b -b -b at the drooling boar. Uh, as you approach the, uh, as you the as you approach the drooling boar, it is uh, the it's your classic it's your classic D and D tavern, um, hanging over the uh, the sign. There's an upside down boar that has some kind of pipe leak uh, hooked up to it, where it's actually drooling upside down into a flagon. Huh? That's is, super cool. It is it is super cool, uh, and you can hear the chants of Jack. People chanting Jack uh, as you enter, and uh, there are various the, the there are various there are various orcs, uh, drow, dwarves. There's a fire there's a fire giant in here, which is a sight to behold. But you don't have time for that. Um, you see Dandy Jack doing a dandy jig on a dandy table with a dandy flag in his hand. And then everyone locks their eyes on the three royals that just walked in. But I've got my stealth cloak on. I should be unrecognizable. How about you instead lick my balls? <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, I feel like two of us are perfectly regular royals, but I don't know who this invisible stealth ninja is right beside us. I have to agree with you. I have no idea who that cloaked figure is. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to the bar and order Dandy Jack a rum. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I yeah. I don't usually drink rum. <laughs> I'm an IPA man, really. Uh, but it's kind of weird that you're buying me a drink. I would have thought you wanted me dead, and he he knocks it back. Oh, I wouldn't kill you here in front of everyone. Ah! Yeah. Mm -mm. We have to keep appearances, don't we? Well, to, well, if I'm going to be completely honest, I didn't want to kill any of you in the forest. Oh, you didn't. Then what was your plan? Oh, uh, well, uh, my bosses don't really want me to tell you what the actual job was. But, regardless, needless to say, uh, I was supposed to take two of you in alive. Ah, which two? You and you. He points to Scorch and Howl. The blue one and the fleshy one. The, the, the scaly one and the fleshy one. The normal colored fleshy one. Sorry. I uh, couldn't care less about. But you guys were pretty good at fighting, so I didn't... I had to use my catastrophe. <laughs> Can explain why you had a dead person in your heart then? A what? The other princess. Um, roll an insight check, anyone. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Rolling, rolling. Oh my god. Ah. Ten. He said a what? A what? Uh, I, I, I don't know what you mean, um, at all. So the dream figure means nothing to you then. I'm sorry. In your cart. Well, technically, it wasn't my cart. I just part of my contract is I could rig explosives to the bottom of it. So whose cart was it? Oh, uh, the. Those goons, they're the ones that the, the, the goons are the ones that brought them. It's just part of, you know, part of my contract. I get to rig it with explosives for a getaway. Okay. Who'd you con who did you contract the goons from? Uh, no, they came with the contract. Hmm. And you're not going to tell us who sent them, I assume. I mean, confidentiality. Isn't, well, doesn't we'll, mean a whole lot if you're dead, but you, you know. We can do this. Probably two ways. We either find out who did this, and we go after them, and we leave you alone. Or, we skin you, and we find those people anyway. Careful now, Scorch and Howl. 
We have many, many knives. I'm sure we can get creative. Ooh. There are plenty of citizens about here. Careful, Scorch and Howl. Uh, everyone, uh, make a uh, perception check. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, cough, cough. Anyone, um, any one of you. Go. Oh my god. Yep. Fucking hell, same roll. Another ten. Rolling it. Well, roll. Well, let's, let's see. Virtual dice. Okay. Fourteen. The room feels slightly colder. Um, you, uh, blah, blah, blah. you can, you can, you see him, uh, rest his hand on his collar, but you don't really think anything of it. Knives, you said. Hey, how did you know my one weakness was knives? Um, and then he quick draws his crystal pistol and points it at your head. Hmm. Now you said you said there were two options, right? And he gives you he gives you he gives you a, he gives you a grin. Now Would hold on. Disarm? We don't need to get rowdy inside of this establishment. We were here to ask some questions, right, Scorch and Howl? We you wanted some want, answers. You don't want to kill us. I honestly I don't. Especially not the red one or the windy one. Because I still right, am contracted you to bring us you in. Alive, so you're not going to shoot that. Yeah, probably not you. He points it up and fires. Okay. <sighs> Hate guns. Make a perception check. <laughs> Just keep calm for like two <laughs> seconds. Fucking hell. Oh my gosh. Are you guys serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my the RNG hates uh, us. I'd... You hear something, it, it, it sounds vaguely like the whistling of a tea kettle. The room is colder still, but you guys don't think any of it! Uh, and then Danny Jack, he taps the, the the barrel of his gun against his nose, and then Jess just l looks up with his eyes. You guys follow him, and see that there's another lit fuse on the ceiling, and suspended kegs and nets. Fifteen. Fourteen. You'd blow yourself 15. up too? Nope! <laughs> Pass for that. He uh he uses uh ba 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 as a a rogue thing. Da -da -da -da. He uses what is it called? It's a bonus action. Hold on. Uncanny. Cunning thing. action to make. Cunning uh, action. Okay. He uses a cunning action to to get away. Okay. Uh, I, 15, I rush for the door. Fourteen. Everybody out. Thirteen. Everyone's already left. That's why the room got oh. colder. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. You to the door. Thirteen. Twelve. Yeah. No, it was a full man sprint to the door. Ooh. Ten. Nine. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Which direction eight. did Dandy uh, Jack head? Um, the opposite direction of the door. Okay, so we'll go around the back after we get out. I'm going to follow Dandy Jack directly. Okay, we'll uh, split I'm, up then. Okay, <laughs> then I'm gonna add, so then scorch. Bad. Scorch, uh, make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. No, I mean, oh. uh, blue. No, no, me. Blue, okay. yeah, my bad. Oh. Okay, that's okay. why I was like... 14? Okay. Um, that was me, that was, that was, that was me. Okay. I had already wrong. clicked it's it before wrong. you are like, no! It's wrong. Okay, that's on me then. It's all good. Okay. 18. 18. Nicely done. Uh, uh, you catch the the singed tail of Dandy Jack as he rounds a corner in the tavern and you sp full sprint using that excellent uh, military trained agility to keep pace with him as he uh, jumps over barrels and boxes uh, around back and exits the tavern um, and he high fives <laughs> he actually high fives the dwarf that was behind the counter as he <laughs> as he passes um, and you follow, and you follow him, and 
Three, two, one. Silence. The the fuse. It was a fucking bluff. <laughs> but yes. blue, but blue is on the tail of Dandy Jack, and <laughs> and yeah, we're just. You know what? What we're gonna do is we're going to do for this chase. We're going to do rock. We're gonna do um. Dexterity saving throws best two out of three. Ready? Okay. One, two, Dexy. three, roll. Rolling. Eleven. Uh, when it takes, you know, it's sweet time. Oh, I think you got that one. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, roll. Nineteen. Uh. It's blue and... Ten. Oh. Oh, I'm yeah. done. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're not on that side of the building. No, oh, yeah. Geez, I... <laughs> it's fine. Okay, I so, blue, blue, you make a, you You keep up as best as you can, but two turns and a very high stack of crates later, Dandy Jack is gone, and you are, you are left alone in an alleyway. I have a question in chat. God damn it! That's fine. We'll get him. And Dandy uh -huh. Jack escapes. Um, blue and Scorch. Uh, oh, not Scorch. Uh, not blue. Uh, Howl and Scorch. Uh, you were gathered with some of the patrons, um, uh, outside of the, the out of the tavern who had already left. They all know Jack well enough to know that this may that may or may not have been a fluke, and so they exited. Just for their own safety, <laughs> but now they see that the building did blow up. They they start to trickle back into the the drooling boar. Mm. Look, we still know. Oh yeah, I, I'm gonna make scorch and howl. You can hear you can hear a murmur in the crowd. That's classic Dandy Jack getting away. Why does he always blow things up? It's just how Dandy Jack do, man. That's why. That's how you become a legend. You know, there was this one legendary sea captain. His name was Sea Hook, and he blew his ship and set a ship on fire so many times. Uh, <laughs> like that she ra reference? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, Blue meets up with Scorch and Hell in front of the drooling in front of the drooling boar. He got away. He didn't get away. Remember, he's boarding the ferry in the morning. We just have to yeah. figure out which ones are heading out which way. We'll be fine. Now that we know, though, he is contracted out. Well, while we're out, we should probably ask around the docks for which one's leaving tomorrow morning. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have another idea. Oh? He's not going to tell us who contracted him, but Malachite might know. Asking him is an unreliable source. We just know him from a few moments ago, and before our parents talk to him, we can't really ask him about anything reliable. He did just give us information that turned out to be true. True enough, but also there could be the likely case that he contracted him. Do you and want... at our household to kill our parents. Do you want to potentially have this cat try to blow us up on a ferry full of people who can't escape? As far as I've understood, you two wouldn't get blown up, so I don't know why you're so worried. Uh, because of the other passengers on said ferry? Other passengers don't matter as much as the royal family. They actually have impact on what goes on. Every citizen of this kingdom matters, and you're willing to throw their lives away. I didn't say throw their lives away. I'm more saying start thinking smart and less irrationally. Ah, oh, no. Just head in and it'll mm -hmm. work out eventually. <laughs> I think that we might be chasing a dead end with Jack. Exactly. We have a contract. We don't need to follow the, the boat. The boat isn't going to leave. He's just leaving. Plus, if we really wanted to, we could ask all the patrons inside and one of them probably talk to Jack about it. But he doesn't seem okay. to be the guy. Okay, can we at least get an inside guy to watch him? 
It's like I do with Jack. The family has known him for a while. There's been no reason to watch him. Now that we actually know that there is nothing going on. What if he's going on the ferry to meet with someone else? He does want us. He was in contract to capture you two, which was and ended up to be a fail. Obviously, yeah, those they... contract terms have changed, or else he would have done it inside of that tavern. Hmm. Now, oh, well, in the tavern, he was unprepared. Now he knows we're after him. Exactly. Why well, even more reasoning going after the boat would be a less optimal decision. Yes, but I'm he might also want us out of the way. You seem to be not in favor of doing anything right now. What is it that you want to do, Blue? I want to go back to the castle. I want to let our parents talk to whoever this Malachite man is. And I want to see if what they're going to tell us is going to sway our opinions and whether or not we should actually keep moving forward. As much as revenge for our dear dead sister is an ideal option, I don't think we're really given it right now. Well, again, his contractor is the one we need to worry about. If Malachite proves that we can trust him, then we can ask him if he knows anything about that. But it was probably in his contract to not talk about those events. So what I'm saying is going back to the castle is also a safe place for you two. Oh, uh, you misunderstand me. I'm not saying we should ask Jack, I'm saying we should ask Malachite. Oh yes, we should ask Malachite after our parents talk to him. Y yes. Well, our and parents it's... are in bed, and we're out right now, so... Because we were going to go do questionable things, but now that we've turned out those things can't be completed, as quickly as we wanted to. Oh, thank god I found you guys! Uh, Will, it, Will and Grace has appeared with coffee. You guys left in such a hurry, like I couldn't get you your coffee in time. I found you oh, guys. Lord. We were on a mission. I'm so sorry. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Will and Grace. You two are always the best. You really did I, Will and Grace, Will, Will, Will and is one person. Yes. Sorry. You said, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that you knew that. <laughs> he is one very good dear boy chef. Yes. Yes. Well, they chef. <laughs> my bad. I misgendered my own character. Dang it. Oh, no. It it's a crime. I do it too. It's fine. <sighs> um, so how was your night? I did Oh. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, oh, okay. Um, well, I, I'm i going back to the castle. I don't know if you guys are going back to the castle either. Or, yes. It's, you know, it's... Yes. <laughs> I kind of got carried away in my duties to get you this coffee. I shouldn't be out in the middle of the night. I'm just a little deer boy. They. Them. Chef. I'm a little deer chef. We can trap back together. Okay. Wait, uh, corporate magician, do you want to, do you want to see Will and Grace? You know what, I'm showing them Will and Grace anyway. Alright. Will and Grace is adorable. Uh, you guys make any more conversation as you walk back to the castle? Yeah, Blue's gonna keep to himself. I am going over the plans that I had to skin this fucking cat, and I'm crossing out shit, because now we can't do it. Will and Grace, oh, Will and Grace is explaining uh, this new invention that he created to pump chocolate onto Frappuccinos. And so... <laughs> and then so, when I push the button, uh, there's a, a stream of, of chocolate that comes out. And then I can use that to make cool designs on the foam. Oh, I haven't told you about the foamer. Oh, and he continues. He rambles on and on and on, and you guys finally make it to the <laughs> castle. That's adorable. You're very passionate about your job. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, his ears flicker, and they flip back, and he says, mm, "There, dang it! <laughs> I keep misgendering my character." <laughs> You're okay. Ah! Mm. For the record, Will and Grace's pronouns are they slash sl they slash chef. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Okay. What do you guys do once you get back to the castle? Will and Grace is going to the kitchen where he sleep. They sleep also. <laughs> where chef sleeps. That's where the chef sleeps in the kitchen. Like any good Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys, sleeping? You guys yes. turn in for the night, or are you off to, off, uh, up to more mischief? Blue is going to head to sleep for the night. Uh, when you walk into when you walk into the room, um, you you see David asleep, but not, it doesn't appear that he's been sleeping well. He's been it looks like he's been turning and tossing. Um, <laughs> there's uh. Brady Bunch is in the in your in your room. Uh, he is laying out the prince's clothes for the next day and um, collecting the dirty clothes into the hamper. Um, he doesn't say anything as you as you come in as to not wake the crown prince. Uh, I'm going to just go over to bed, put my stuff away, and. Just be ready for the next day. All right. Uh, Scorch Howl? Yeah, I'm a turn in. Yeah. I can't run down a cat if I'm tired. Uh, and so the sun set. And so the night sky dances with cosmic light. The moon makes a brilliant arc over the land of Paternia. In the dungeons, a crazy old man sleeps. And in the fine royal bedrooms, royal butts sleep peacefully in the royal sofas with royal comforters and royal thread counts. <sighs> nighttime. I love the nighttime. Nighttime is so cool. Uh, anyway, it's morning now. Uh, Brady Bunch <laughs> wakes up. Uh, the Crown Prince. Um, and also Blue Moon. There's a, it's, a, it's a typical day. Not as special as Oracle Day. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Carol Brunette wakes up the twins and her normal clumsy uh, antics. And it is not very long until the entire royal family is sitting down at breakfast, catered magnificently by they chef, Will and Grace. <laughs> and so you guys went out without me. You wanted to go to bed. I mean, I, yes, but like also if you were, st I thought we, I, I thought it was like obvious that it was time to go to bed t for everyone. I didn't think you guys were insane enough to actually go out again. <laughs> if it's any consolation, we did get more information. Oh yes, from the madman in the, in the, from the madman with a giant turtle. He gestures out to the, to the, to the balcony. Where the giant turtle yes. is still parked. We know where Dandy Jack is. You do? We do. We actually found him last night. He got away, but we know where he's going He got today. away! He's going on the ferry this morning. Okay. Um, that's better than, better than nothing. You guys are idiots. You did. You took that crazy man's wor guy's word at his word, and you just went and. It was a bar. What harm is there in going to a bar late at night? <laughs> okay. Uh, David stands up and he puts his leg on the table, um, and he lifts up his pant leg to reveal a scar. And you guys all know that that scar happened at a bar fight. And he looks at you oh. with big eyes. You're I'm sorry. Bringing this up again? Yes, again. Every single time we talk about going into a tavern, <sighs> it's this fucking scar again and again. Ah. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tiberius stands up and says, "Yeah, we're going to do a mandatory search of all of the outbound going ships today. We will find That's the cat. Wonderful. We will find the cat." Any. Taps his nose and sniffs the air. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. 
Uh, it's King David says, "It sounds wonderful. I will, I will be there." Um, just because I've got nothing else to do, honey. Uh, what are your plans today? Well, I uh, figured I might start my day with some intellectual stimulation regarding the giant turtle that's parked right by our breakfast table. <laughs> He's very insistent on speaking to you. I'm who? Dan the Mr. Green Bitch. He's very insistent on talking to all three of you. You know what? I might, I might give him. You know what? Maybe you. Know, I'll, yeah, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll give him. I'll, I'll give him a visit. Yes. I'll Mind give if we accompany you? I've already intimidated him. It might scare him into giving you more information. <laughs> I don't think that works, mate. I sure fine. If you two want to join me, um, you know what? I'll take the twins. We'll interrogate the the prisoner, and then boys trip to the docks to find the cat. I guess. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, everyone. Are we all squared away with our our tasks for today? She's a little. She seems to be a little pissed off. Yep. Yeah. Pan freaking tastic. Will, please, can I have my espresso? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Places the little the, the thing on the saucer. And then she takes a deep breath. <sighs> knocks it, like, right back. It's the steam coming out of her nose and everything. She knocks the espresso right back. Ugh. Okay. Okay. And she snaps her fingers and she's all dressed and ready for today. For the day. I'll do some rudimentary sketches of the thing. Um, Fred Sanfordson. Yes, your majesty. Uh, Fred Sanfordson waddles up the little, little short guy. Oh uh, yes, bring my uh, big sketchboard and paper and quill and ink and right away, your majesty. And he shuffles away again uh, within minutes. Uh, he come, he returns with the giant board, uh, with papers and stuff. So I'll do some rudimentary sketches while everyone gets ready. Let me just. Well, can I get another, another one? Yes, Your Majesty. Uh, David, uh, walks with Blue down to the armory and gets armored up for the day. Uh, and there's this nice, there's a nice little locker room scene with the two king dads and uh, Blue and David. Now, son, what you need to remember, my boy, uh, about uh, intimidating people is that, firstly, I'm not any good at it, <laughs> and I usually let my scarier husband do it. No offense, sweetheart, you're my good little boy, and he scratches Tiberius' head. Um, so... I would suggest you also let your scarier counterpart do all of the intimidation. Dad, I can be scary in my own right. It's hey, called, yeah. may I ask you a question? And he holds two hatchets in either hand. <laughs> you are funny, my boy. I wasn't trying to be funny. Yeah, but... <laughs> Dad, just show off your scar. Scars are intimidating. You guys are passing... The, the locker room on the way to the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys want to do the dungeon scene first, or the the scene at the docks? I mean, the dungeon scene's a little bit closer, I'd say, to... Yeah, it does make more thematic quicker. sense. Oh. So, again, you guys walk past petty thieves, non-petty thieves. Um, as someone in the chat properly called out, yes! Diogenes is in jail. <laughs> That's a philosophy joke that only one person in the chat got. And you finally make it I wasn't to. I in the chat yet. Oh. Uh, let me call out the person who got it. Uh... Yeah, it was. Oh, it was corporate magician. Which corporate magician got my my uh, Diogenes joke? Good job, corporate magician. Uh, so you guys make it to the 
the cell, the cell of Malachite. First of all, Queen Etheria starts. <sighs> Malachite. You know, it is exceedingly rare for someone of elven blood to have the name Malachite. Do you understand? Yes, I understand perfectly well. He gives a. He, his, head, his skull is tilted down, but he like looks up through his eyebrows. I understand so, perfectly well. Sounds like he's compensating. But it is notable that I am not a statue of pure Malachite. Right, your highness. <sighs> that gets under her skin. Uh, you can see a shiver run down her spine. Um, she is, in fact, intimidated by that very, that, that very fact. <clears throat> I know what you're thinking. And I don't have to do anything unless you're absolutely sure you want to know whether or not your theory is correct. Your majesty. I am terrified that I'm right. And let me let me guess that you already know this, Malachite. I am always right. I am the magical authority of this kingdom, and I am terrified that I might be right. Children, do you do you know what magical capability it takes to conquer one's true name? Not entirely. Unfathomable. Magic mastery. Very few, few, pe very few individuals with elven blood m train to the point where they can overcome the curse of their true name. So, that this fairly young elf person here has a true name, and it is Malachite. It is very concerning. Now, have you two been paying attention to the past couple of days? Can you tell me exactly who else has conquered their true name that we know of? Hmm? Our grandmother. Yes, your grandmother, Florine, Florite, the Oracle. How is she, by the way? Oh, I know, it's fine. You don't have to tell me. <clears throat> Crazy as ever, but it's normal. I'm not supposed to answer him. Howell, um, do me a favor and take off your shirt. Uh, that was uh, that was a theory. My bad. I might have mixed up the voices. Howell, do me a favor and take off your shirt. Sure. I have no idea what's up. Wait, hold on. Does Howell have the 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 gold markings or no? No. Okay. I didn't add them because you said that. Yeah, I, I was. That's right. There's the blood thing. Um, does Scorch have the gold markings? Yeah. On the chest. Yes, I I added them. Okay, cool. Um, let me just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Scorch, do me a favor and uh, take off your take off your shirt, please. In front of him? You sure? I don't want to see it either. He covers his eyes. Okay. Then I take off my shirt. Uh. Nice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. Malachite, you know exactly what I'm going to ask you to do now, don't you? Let me ask you one more time, Your Majesty, if you are 100% certain you want to know whether or not you are correct. Well, I certainly want to know. Just take off your shirt. Malachite. I already did. Malachite. I was talking to Malachite. Oh, it's... Just take off your shirt. Uh, Malachite still has his eyes covered, and slowly he takes off his robe, and he only has one shoulder down, and you can already make out gold markings on his chest. And 
he takes he he maneuvers his hand around and takes down the other shoulder and howl etheria and scorch can now plainly see that the chest markings match oh shit So is you like our grandfather, or is w- what's going on here? Can can she please put her shirt back on? Fine. Fine. I don't want to see that. Never it's have. Freezing. Never will. I put we are related. <laughs> we are related. Obviously, that would be gross. Well, then you should be more comfortable with it then. <laughs> Queen Theria. <sighs> how? Queen Etheria says, how? 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 And then under Malachite's breath, you can barely make out the words, the world. And suddenly he's behind you, unshackled, outside of the cage. Crap. You guys take a second and you spin around to see him. Should we be worried? Perhaps I should... <laughs> Perhaps I should introduce myself again. My name is Malachite, father of Chronomancy. Cut. We're down in the... Do- now we're down at the... Now we're down at the, the port. Uh, where the keen-nosed, uh, the keen-nosed, oh my goodness, my mother's home. Mom? Hold on, I gotta go hug hug my mom, she just came back from a trip. You guys talk, theorize, I'll be right back. How's the chat doing? So, I was right, and he does know time magic. He was talking like he was from the future. Yep. He was. It's funny, Wait, is so is he a descendant then? Is he from the future? Oh. That's an interesting one. Hmm. It's funny that this is happening after the movie we watched. Yeah. Hold on, I'll be right back. I gotta go talk to Corporate Magician. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, corporate magician, but is it anatomically correct? (laughs) (sighs) Okay. Um, so, uh, guards are lined up with various boxes. Oh, uh, Fallen had to just for a quick second. Okay, I'm back. Cool. I can confirm the progress is going well. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys are. You guys check. Oh my goodness. Huh? What? Sorry, Never mind. No, I'm not what? I'll. 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 I'll, 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 I'll fine. We're good. I'll anyway, confirm um, my theories uh, after the thing. Uh huh. Uh. Nothing, nothing cool. makes that person draw, and then you know, the the option of. Nudity being drawn just okay. awakens it. Okay. 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 Um, so there's like two teams, two operations going on at the same time down at the docks. Okay. There is there is um David and David, King and Prince, uh, interviewing the people, while while um teams of Teams of guards corral the people, and Tiberius and Blue are inspecting crates, sniffing for cat, and you are just shaking crates, I I think. I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? Uh, well, the last area that we saw... Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'm looking around through areas of crates that might be recognized as sort of... Uh, anything that either seems out of place, any crates that seem to be tampered with since... Like they've been damaged, uh, claw marks, scratches. 
of someone Follow maybe the climbing trail of them. gunpowder. <laughs> and yeah, Dandy Jacks is wonderful, wonderful, most lovely thing he loves using all the time. Yeah, make an investigation check. Make an investigation check. <laughs> Yeah, where's the investigation? There it is. Oh, what did I get? Oh, oh my, oh, oh. Mm -mm -mm. Hey, mm -mm. much better. Mm -mm. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, so you have found all of the gunpowder barrels in all of the marina, and have <laughs> gathered them in one spot. <laughs> This is, and on you second thoughts, this seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> and, so you can say you say that to yourself, um, and uh, you are soon uh, uh, berated by a by a dwarf who is like, "What are you doing with all the gunpowder? We need some of that gunpowder. We're gonna go and Dad, you don't need to know what we're doing. That's privacy reasons. But we need our gunpowder. All of us do for the defense against." Things. Give us our gunpowder back, you, you, you rascal. We'll give it back as soon as we're done doing our investigation, short stack. Mm. Okay, That's I'm a gonna move. have. That's an oof. That is an oof. <laughs> that is an oof. Just casually. I didn't say it about his whole species. I just was saying about him in particular. I'm just gonna. Uh, that person in particular, short stack. Wow. Okay. But yes. He's oh. gonna go all Edward Elric on your ass, and you're gonna regret it. <laughs> um. Hey, you know what? I'll be okay with it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so I'm going to I'm going to tell you what I did and then I'm going to tell you what happens. So, I made Dandy Jack roll a deception check and he rolled a 9. Uh and then I made David roll an investigation and mm. he rolled I see. <laughs> He rolled a 22. So, not Long after Dandy Jack joins the the menagerie with his hat pulled down low, uh, he like kind of worms his way through the crowd and tries to make it into the edge. Tries to smooth talk past a guard, but as soon as he passes the guard, there's there's David. David has this gigantic smirk on his face, and he whistles loudly. And blue. Now you can. Now you all. You, the cat. Now now you. Both of the dads and all of the guards, um, including the guard that he Dandy Jack had just passed, all like immediately see him, and he is surrounded. Ah! <laughs> now did you know I was leaving by boat? I could have lent so many ways. Well. <sighs> I'm getting away this time, Dandy Jack. <sighs> Fine. He puts his he puts his paws out. I know what I'm beat. So. <clears throat> I mean, is someone going to is someone him? going to cuff me? He's a cat. Cuffs me nothing. Well, we're not there. We can't do shit. I was going to say, is there oh, guards? Are guards going to... Yeah, the two, uh, two guards cuff his hands and his feet. Uh, they cuff his hands behind him, and they cuff the cuffs to the cuffs, and now he's, like, immobilized, more or less. And... I, uh, walk up to him. <sighs> I ah, I remember you from last him. night. I gave you the slip. Yes. Yeah, you gave me quite the slip. Mm -hmm. Not this mm -hmm. time, though. Sadly. I don't know. Strange oh, well, things happen in the city. I guess if you're uh, going to be going to the jails for a bit, you won't need this. And I reach and grab his pistol. Oh, fooey. My signature weapon. That sucks. Okay. Uh, just put that back. I'm going to figure out how that thing works later. Mm. Not like they come in pairs, usually. 
Hey, that's, that's meta. As far as I remember, so. That's right. I I was just guessing. Holy and fuck! And she's not no, here, so it was uh, just to the no. No, regardless of you were right, regardless of you're right or wrong, it's still meta. Well, no, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about the fact that she's not there and we're not acting. That's on true. It, so we're all good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Dandy Jack is found and cuffed, and he seems to be cooperating nicely, which isn't normally up to his mo. Yeah. You know what? Would normally... I let's be. Now I'm going to be. I'm going to be uncharacteristically honest, and you can incite that if you want. Uh, but I actually, eternally, um, ethereally, destructively, um, hate boats and water. I so that you're a little pussy cat. That's well, here's the thing. The tickets, the, the the ferry, the ferry ticket out of here, uh, came with the contract, and so, you know what? I think I would rather go to jail than go on a boat. So there's that. Um, for my first meal, if I could have fish and then chicken, uh, the next day, and then chicken the next day, and then for the last, the next one, um, let's let's go with turkey. Someone writing this down. Uh, David, oh, yeah. David. Uh, King David uh, pushes his back and he starts walking towards the castle. Uh, the dwarf and all of the other sailors start uh, taking their rations of gunpowder out of the gigantic pile. Um, Good stuff. Uh, Blue, make a... Make an... In uh, what would be? It'd be a perception check. Perception? Oh, I'm so great. I've always been so great at these perception checks. Oh. Oh, that was a little bit of a tease. Uh, 16. Your eye catches an unusual shadow on the cobblestone. Uh, it looks, th that shadow looks like the, the flickering of a tail. Uh, but it's kind of weird because the sun is fairly high. What would make a, a shadow like that? You look up. And it's a flag in the wind. Okay. <laughs> Must be getting really paranoid about these things. <laughs> yeah. Good and so you guys march back to the castle. And we return to... Uh, we return to... Uh, Scorch, Howl, and Queen Etheria with the now-liberated Malachite, father of Chronomancy. Crazy old man who knows how to do time magic. Woo! Uh, yes. Sorry. That's uh, been floating around in my head for, like, since you first mentioned <laughs> it. <laughs> Queen Etheria's jaw has never been slacked so low in her life. Um, Unless she's handling that... M no, no. It, mm -hmm. it would be Tiberius more than it would be David. I know what you were thinking. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Corporate magician. The king's the the king the, the the ruling relationship in this kingdom is a, is a power thruple. <laughs> Sorry, actually hearing it be calling a power thruple is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that is the only way. A three-way polyamorous relationship should ever be called is a power, power thruple. <laughs> yes, I love this. Two dads, one mom. Power thruple. And they have ruling power. <laughs> Polycare for life. <laughs> okay. Um, let's 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 try to let's try to let's try to regather the seriousness of what was just revealed. The old man's a chronomancer, a school of magic that, up until this point, doesn't exist. Chronomancy is a myth. Chronomancy, Chronomancy is a theoretical school of magic. There's no... You did a time stop. What uh, time Malachite, bullshit Ma is this? Malachite puts his uh, finger on his nose and then points at, uh, at uh, Etheria. Time stop. It was uh, the word you used. It was uh, 
Zawaldo. Oh, I hate you. No. In old Elvish, the the world Zawaldo means stop the revolution. And so I stopped the revolution and was able to exist outside of time for a very limited amount of time in which everything else was stuck as it is. And, uh, so you're actually, you, you are, you are a father of chronomancy, Malachite. So you, so you are David. Yes. I am, I am David, Mom. Oh! I'm so proud of you! And she gives David a big hug. Wait a minute! My David's not a wizard! Oh! Yeah, I'll, I'll get into that. Um... I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that later. Um... A little later, but, yeah... Do me a favor and don't tell me that I'm me, okay? Sure. I want to do it, alright? I want to see this stupid face when that all happens. Oh, please, please, I need to see this too. Wouldn't that cause a paradox? <laughs> oh, don't you worry. Don't you worry, my fiery sister. Which is why I didn't want to oh. see your... Show me the scar! Prove it! <sighs> Fine. And he puts his he puts his he puts his uh his leg up against the against the the one of the bars and lifts his pant he unbuckles some of the the plate mail and reveals a very faded scar on his calf. Okay, fine. I believe you. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to see your business. And he buckles his plate mail up. And before you ask, I chose to dress this way. I like dressing this way. Okay, Time Lord, let's get going then. Time Lord. I like the sound of that. I'm I'm running with it. Malachite the Time Lord. <laughs> All right. Um so you guys walk back up to where the where the uh ba -ba -ba, where the turtles parked by the balcony. Um Malachite now helps uh, Queen Etheria with the drawing and explain something or two about the giant turtle's design and design choices. Actually, if you, did you guys see? I, I'm gonna put it in the chat, but did you guys see the the drawing that I did of the of the turtle? I posted it on my Instagram. I did. Oh, I didn't look at your for the turtle today. No, it wasn't. It wasn't today. It was Sunday. But here's uh, here's the picture that I posted on my Instagram. Is the there's a drawing of the turtle. It's in the book. It's in the book. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's up on the shore there. Yeah. I'm not on Instagram very often. That's fine. Um, uh, so very shortly after that, you've uh, David, David, Blue, and Tiberius arrive with Dandy Jack cuffed. Um, oh, you found him! That's wonderful. Why is he out of his cage? Agreed. Reasons that we will explain later. Right now, let's deal with the cat. Well, you two right. are alive, so that's well enough. Of course. Um, yeah, Mal Malachite, if you could just... If you... I'll take care of this. You keep drawing. Okay. And <laughs> starts drawing more. He continues to draw on the... Uh, draw his turtle on the papers and pages. Uh... You guys set up, uh, uh, Brady Bunch, Carol Brunette, and, uh, Fred Sanfordson set up the, the, the hall, uh, in the court fashion. So, the three thrones are placed atop a slight raise, and the, the, the royal power cup, the, the royal power thruple sits atop their, their seats. And Dandy Jack is, uh, set to kneel before them, um... The royal children stand two on one side, two on the other. Uh, behind Dandy Jack and David stands and says, <clears throat> Dandy Jack. Dandy Jack. <clears throat> Sorry. I have to put on my regal voice. I'm being serious. Dandy Jack. For the crime of murder against the princess 
Arya, how do you plead? Innocent, my lord. Can we, like, cast Zone of Truth or something? Um... I don't know Zone of Truth. Um, well, I, I don't know Zone of Truth either. Anyone? Well, shit. We do need someone that knows Zone of Truth. Maybe that should be what we do after. Mm. <laughs> well, I didn't kill the princess. Is she dead? Yes. For the, co for the court, we submit Exhibit A. Brady Bunch, please bring forth the jades. Uh, Brady Bunch wheels out a cart full of um, Aria. And uh, Dandy Jack looks at it. I don't know what any of this is. You feel free to insight that all you want. Yeah, I I'm a, I'm a dead oh. there. Motherfucking dice. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, what the heck? The dice do not like us today. Some days, uh, some days they aren't in favor. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No. You know what? Screw it. David's gonna do one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's his sister. He was the most torn up about this. Yeah, go, go, gadget insight. <laughs> so you should say go, go, gadget insight. Yes. Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure I just process that. <laughs> That's a seven. What the fuck? Uh, so, ew. yeah, I don't know what any of this is. But, um, my son, would you please explain to the criminal where we found these jades? We found these jades in the rubble of your exploded cart when you came and attacked us uh, after we saw the oracle. Ah, you know, uh, doesn't... Catastrophe. Catastrophe, that I remember. Um, I don't remember this much green rock. Or any green rock for that matter. You guys, whenever he says anything that you don't think is true, you can insight. Come on. Please. Fuck. I got it, well. <laughs> okay, Blue's going to check this one at least. <laughs> oh my god. I want the oh, no, wait, fuck. points! Insight, not perception. Let's see. I want to know things. It'd be nice to know things. Ah, oh, you got a perfect so it, perception! It, it, well, yeah, it's an 18, <laughs> not a 20, but yeah. You got a good perception. Um, You perceive him to be a... Uh, an honorable thief. You can tell by the way that he, the way that he kneels, and the way that his ears are tucked back, and the way in which he's um, presenting himself. He knows and believes and is proud of the fact that he is a thief. But you can also get an air of honor about him. That's what you get from his body language and his posture from that perception check. If you want to insight the, the presumed BS that he's spitting. <laughs> He seems truthful. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, King David says, um, How would you explain my daughter ending up... I'm sorry. How would you explain my daughter ending up in the rubble of your cart? Point of order. Not my cart. I just blew it up. Um, Ethereum stands up. Then whose cart was it exactly? Well, I was contracted um, with some henchmen who provided a cart and ferry tickets out. I, as I mentioned, don't like boats, don't like water. And so, yeah, I agreed to the job, which was to capture the twins. Um, on one condition, my, my foolproof... Escape plan, uh, 
which is known as catastrophe, where I blow up something big, and the biggest, closest thing was the card. So you mean to have me believe that you had no idea what the contents of the cart was other than the rigged explosives? Where were these explosives? Uh, they were strapped to the bottom of the cart. I like that. It's, it sends more debris out and up. Causes a much more, much more havoc. I'm a connoisseur of sorts uh, about explosives. I so can attest that we didn't see him come out of the cart, just as goons. Yes. Thank you, princess. <laughs> uh -huh. he, he's got a big cheeky cat grin on his face. I'm twirling around a dagger, trying to look intimidating. Uh. Ooh, feisty. Well, there. <laughs> That's how intimidating. <laughs> so, Roar. can you prove that you had no idea what was in the cart? I, I have never been inside the cart. They just told me to drive it. They, they told me to drive it. Um, when my friends, friends, he, he makes paw air quotes behind his back uh, in, in the cops. When my friends uh, brought me on to this, this, this escapade, it was Oracle Day, I was drunk. Uh, we all got a room. I laid down for a cat nap. Um, uh, when I woke up, I think maybe a couple of hours later, my friends were just getting in, and they had something very large with them. I didn't ask questions. I'm a very courteous cat. And I saw them load the same big thing into the cart. I don't know what it was. I don't ask questions. That's their business. I did rig the cart with explosives. And if you want to ask me any more questions about the explosives, that would be fine and... Dandy. Mm. I hate this cat, David says, whispering over to you, Blue. Agreed. Uh, no, King David says, can... It would appear we do not have enough evidence to convict Dandy Jack. It is very troubling. Into Dupart add something, he did attack us and attempt kidnapping against the royal family. Unsuccessfully, I might add. Unsuccessfully, but attempt was still made. I am winning so many points. You guys are agreeing with me so much. Thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. Well, unsuccessfully is kind of obvious, or else we wouldn't be here right now. Um, I wouldn't be here if... I liked boats, so ha. Ooh, big talk You'd for a man. You'd be here anyway. Anyway, you backs off the track dock. before he is in disrupt. He attempted to kidnap the most entirely of the royal family. Then threatened. Then threatened if we did not cooperate, he would do it by force. He then proceeded to do it by force by, as from his wording released the three goons from the cart to attack us. Then thereafter, when we did not comply and his goons were not successful, he forced... Uh, sorry, he tried to make one last attempt by using explosives. Once that is again, unsuccessful. Very elegant summation, your highness. You said you were hired. By whom? Um, don't know if I want to tell you. I don't uh, think you're, you're going to like the her. answer. Hmm? Did you say something? You're going to tell her. Okay, I'll tell you who I work for if I can walk out scot-free. Uh, uh, all the cases that we can confirm that Are magical ankle bracelets a thing yet? <laughs> Binding spells are and curses are. Um, I don't know how much access we have to those. Blue, your blue Tiberius is um, is uh, his mouth. He has a hand up to he has a hand paw up to his mouth, like away from Danny Jack, and he's mouthing the word tail to you. Mm -hmm. And then he puts his hand down and he kind of makes a kind of a, a a jerking motion, uh, back towards his shoulder. Towards Danny Jack. 
Um, well, like or Tiberius's tail. No, well, he's 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 just making a, a kind of a yanking motion. Okay. And he kind of gives you a big old dog wink. Do dogs <laughs> do dogs <laughs> wink? I mean, they can. I've they never can seen a dog that. wink, and I'm. I'll, I'll confirm. I have seen a dog wink. Okay, cool. He's bipedal and like... sentient. I'm pretty sure that's possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah, that's more. Than... <laughs> Yeah, um, so, I will, yeah, again, I, I'm willing to take that deal, I will tell you who I work for, you're not going to like it, it's a huge plot twist, if I, if I say so myself, um, if you let me walk away scot-free, but if I have to, I will accept one scot. What kind of scot? We can discuss that after you agree or disagree to the scotting. Whether or not be one or no Scots. Um, Blue, uh, Tiberius is like, he's like, do it, do it. But, uh, I very. Boy, I really wish I knew what the fuck he was trying to get on about. <laughs> um, uh, David notices what Tiberius is doing and he's like, Oh, and then he walks over and he he puts a foot on the back of, he puts a foot on Dandy Jack's back and then a hand on his tail and starts to starts to pull on it a little bit. And then Okay, 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 I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell. Please let go. Please, please, please let let go. Please, let go. Please, please and thank you. Please and thank you. I'm a, I'm a good I'm a good kitty. Please, please, please let go oh, of the tail. Please. No. Mm -mm, please, oh, no. please. Please. Oh. Please. Oh dear. Please. David, let's go. Okay, I'll uh, show... Here's the thing. Um, Can I... I incite that to see if it was pain or something else? Go for it, sister! <laughs> I love where your head's at! <laughs> oh, that's a better roll than you... what I've gotten. You think... You can divine that it's a bit of both. Oh, okay. Just the <laughs> slightest bit of both. There's but he's uncomfortable for you, corporate. But he's a, he's a little uncomfortable. He's you can tell that he's a little uncomfortable that David's the one doing it. <laughs> Would he have preferred me? <laughs> <laughs> no, we 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 discussed his um his deal in private. Um, that's but that would be um, that would be uh that would be meta knowledge at this point. But you can't tell it's a little uncomfortable that, he, that, 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 uh, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah, that David was doing it. And so, yeah, he, he's gasping for air now that his tail is free. Okay, so, um, I was hired by a cult. And I was hired by the cult of Typhon. And Etheria goes, Typhon? Typhon? Dun, dun. Typhon? Dun, dun, dun. Um, Ethereal looks to Scorch and Howl, um, with, uh, with shock and amazement. With shock, with, 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 uh, with shock, and sh she's like, oh, Typhon, ty why? They wanted, uh, are, okay. So much new, so much of the world is being turned upside down today. Um... I vote we put him in the dungeon. Uh, David says, uh, King David says, um, uh, sure, yes, also the dungeon. Uh, Tiberius, kill him. Okay, that's two votes for dungeon, one votes for death. I'm sorry, Tiberius, but you've been outvoted. We don't get a vote? <laughs> no. To say. We're the adults here. Uh, put him Aww. in the dungeon. And he claps his hands, and two guards come and drag Dandy Jack away. I hope to see you all very soon! You guys are wonderful company! Um, next time, could I have some rum? Wait, that, that wouldn't be too bad. Did, did, did someone take down my order for lunch? And then he's, go and then he's out of the- he's, he's gone. Uh, so... What was his order for lunch? He... He's a talkative cat. We weren't listening. We weren't there. 
Oh, I, I didn't realize you're asking that. Okay, sorry. Mm. <laughs> so, Etheria, my love, King David says, what's, uh, what's, uh, what's he doing here? He gestures over to uh, Malachite, who's been working dutifully, sketching out the turtle onto the paper. Um, oh, uh, yes. Uh, well, everyone, as you know, this is Malachite. Um, Malachite? Yes. yes? Would you like to do the thing? You wanted to do the thing before. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Let me, let me do, let me do a thing. Um, <clears throat> Miss Carol Brunette, if you're there, could you bring us all, uh, large glasses of water? Um, uh, sure, right away. And she scurries off into the kitchen. And a few moments later, Carol Brunette comes out with a large tray, uh, with, uh, with lots of glasses of water. Here we go. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why you wanted me to get all these glasses of water. And then she starts to trip. And then Amalekite says, the world. <laughs> and then... Uh, in a flash, Malachite is holding the untipped cla- uh, tray of glasses, and Carol Brunette, Carol Brunette uh, face plants onto the floor. My name is Malachite, father of chronomancy, uh, before now theoretical school of magic, and I have come to warn this kingdom. Of an impending doom. But first. Water? Anyone want water? This was more or less a prop to show my fantastical powers of... You actually guys have no idea, except for you guys. You guys know. You have no idea what I just did. David says, no. I'm... You are fast, I guess? (laughs) I'm not just fast. I am a chronomancer. Do you understand what chrono means, little boy? I don't like your tone, sir. I don't like the way that you're short. I don't like the way that you're older than me and using that against me. I don't like the way that (laughs) your true name is Malachite. And David starts to slowly freeze up. There's a confused expression frozen on his face. And starting from his heart, green stone starts to crystallize and expand and cover his whole body. The rings rings that are characteristic of Malachite also form. And soon, Prince David is no more, but a stone statue of pure Malachite. Uh, Fuck. Um, so long- So long story short, I'm him, he's me. Um, time. I did time stuff. Um, I need to fix this. That has to be a paradox, right? It's... Okay, um, we can do one of two things right now. I can either explain why this is not a paradox, or we can save him. We can explain later. Let's just not save him. First cool. All right. Um, he, he picks himself up. <laughs> <laughs> he picks himself up and he walks over to the dragon turtle and uh, climbs up. And so, anyone who wants to save him, climb on in. Okay, everyone into the dragon turtle. The yeah, everyone. Uh, Scorch, Blue Moon, Howl, uh, King David, Tiberius, and uh, uh, Queen Etheria all climb into the dragon turtle. Dragon turtle's mouth closes, and within minutes, you have flown all the way to the Oracle's house. Um, yeah, this won't, this won't take very long. Um, luckily, he though wasn't shattered into a a lot of pieces. A lot, a lot of pieces. If that had happened, we would have been really screwed. Um, and he walks, uh, up and raps on the door. Uh, Oracle Florine. Oracle Florine. Yes? David? My, how, my, how, how you've grown. Has it been this long already? And then she looks down and sees David, the Malachite statue of David in, in Malachite's arms. That is a funny sentence to say. 
Oh! 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 <laughs> yeah, he did an oops. He did an oops. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what the red one said. So, yeah, put him down. Um, uh, <laughs> Malachite puts the Malachite statue of David down. And Fluorite, uh, Fluorite and, uh, Malachite place both of their hands on David's head. And slowly the magic recedes from the head and David shortly returns. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. And slowly but surely, you hear. Ooh. Hey guys! It's me, Mixie, the level up pixie. Oh wait, you guys don't remember who I am. You guys look around and see that fluorite, um, fluorite, uh, Queen Etheria, David the King, and Tiberius are all frozen. Malachite and David are now buckled over in extreme headache. It's time to level up again! You guys didn't do any real combat, but God really said you guys needed to level up. But first I'm gonna show you something really, really cool. Um, I uh, saw so fluoride. Um, oh, not you. You're, you're good. So David and Malachite. <laughs> Temporal nonsense, am I right? Um, you guys are slowly gonna chrono sync for a while. But here's here's the thing. <sighs> they, mm, maybe you should explain how this whole timey wimey nonsense is working. Maybe we should. Uh, you know what? I'll wait until after we're not. Ow. Uh, my head isn't splitting open from a headache, and also we're not in this this bubble. Ah, uh, Nixie. So, yeah. Everybody level up. Woo. Um, we're just gonna say. Um, we'll, let's, let's see what time we have. Yeah, everybody level up. Yeah, we have some. Time, but I wanted to I wanted to explain that David is going to go through a sort of a uh, wonky metamorphosis of sorts. Yeah, wonky metamorphosis. So he, he he's going to become a Chrono Knight. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. So we're all level three now. Martial Archetype. Let's go... Echo Knight. It's what it's called. It's an Echo Knight. My bad. Chrono Knight, Knight is a thing. Oh. Well, I'm, he's gonna be an <laughs> Echo Knight. Okay. I have the Echo Knight stuff. Um. So, now that... Because... You're, well, okay, so what's happening now between Malachite and David is uh, a kind of temporal reverb. David is going to get some odd abilities because Malachite even exists in this timeline. For example, this Echo Knight feature called Manifest Echo. Uh, as a bonus action, you, uh, you can teleport magically swapping places with your Echo. It costs 15 feet of your movement, regardless of distance between the two of you. It's cool. Um, yeah. And then there's also the Unleash Incarnation. Uh, you can you can heighten your echoes uh, flurry uh, when it takes the uh, attack action. You can make one additional melee attack from an echo from the echoes position. So you can yeah, it's uh you're gonna feel more splitting headaches, but you're gonna get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, you're all done leveling up, and uh, you know what needs to happen at one at some point. I'm well aware, Mixie. I'm the father of Chronomancy. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Keep rubbing it at everyone's faces. Jesus. He pours himself uh, a spirit drink. Wonderful. What did you get, big guy? Mixie floats over to, um, uh, to Blue. What'd you get? You have to level up. The level up, I unlocked my primal archetype, which I used to gain frenzy. Once, uh, while you are in a frenzy, you can make a single weapon attack as a bonus action on each of your turns. So while I'm in my rage, I get to do a second attack, pretty much. But, 
doing so renders me with wonder one point of exhaustion after the combat's over. Wow. More hitting. Cool. More hitting. That's always nice. What did you get, Scorch? Uh, I got my Pact Boon, uh, which is Pact of the Blade. Ooh. I can use an action to create a Pact Weapon in my empty hand. I get to choose the form of anything that I'm proficient with. Uh, oh, no, you are proficient with it while you wield it, so it could be something I'm not proficient with. That's Word. cool. That's dope. Uh, and I can also use a one-hour ritual to uh, make a magical weapon my packed weapon. You can, wait, make, you can just make a magic weapon? Uh, no. Like, if I have a magic weapon, I can make it my packed weapon by performing a ritual. Ah, sick. Okay. So you can make a weapon, but then if you have a magic weapon, you can make it your packed weapon. Yeah. Cool. Alright. To keep the bonuses. Do you, do you, are you going to make your weapon while you're still in this bubble, or no? Uh, I'm... Oh, yes, I'm in a bubble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to be sitting there fiddling with which weapon I want to use most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, like, you'll see it change into blades and bows and whatever else while I'm deciding what I want. Yeah. Whatever whatever weapon you manifest, what what remains the same in all of them is the stone that you receive from the patron. The stone always works its way into the design. Ooh. I like that, yes. It's like a it's like um it's like the Omnitrix, basically. <laughs> like wherever whatever alien Ben Ten gets into, the Omnitrix is always there at, at somewhere. Same deal with your weapons and the stone that your pat patron gave you. How? What you get with your level? How? What you get with your level up? Scorch is uh, looking that... sharp over there with her cool weapons. What you get? I got packed of the tome. Packed of the tome. Yep, I get a book of shadows. Uh, while the book is on my person, I can cast three cantrips at will. Cool. If I lose it, I can perform a one-hour ceremony and receive a replacement that destroys the previous one. <laughs> Did you see what uh, corporate magician put in chat? It started with an alien device to what it did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've so never what? Actually, watched Ben Ten. How? Um, how? After you have explained all of that. There is a black, uh, a black shadow uh, departs from yours and comes around in front of you, and it opens up in a big toothy maw, and tentacles stream out of it, and within the tentacles comes this black bound, black black leather bound book, that is now that is being splayed open by these tentacles. And you grab it, and now you have. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Cool. All right. Now I just need to remind that one guy who's far away to level up as well. Okay. Remember, as soon as I disappear, you forget who I am. Ding. Um. You guys. Um. Uh. But but. So Scorch and Hell, you're gonna have to like quickly stash those obviously accursed items into your be person. Um, also, you forgot what happened, and now you just happen to have these things on your person. Uh, awesome! I'm to put it somewhere. <laughs> Malachite, are you doing timey-wimey bullshit again? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> well, anyway, fuck. there was a bit of a question about how I was able to affect David, um, and not cause a temporal paradox. And I also explained... To you, uh, Scorch Howl and Mom. That's weird to say for some reason. That I was a herald of something bad. And it's now time to... It's now time to make it clear and plain. I did not choose music. Why did I go looking for music? Anyway... 
Uh, he stands. Does anyone have my staff? I, I kind of need it. Yeah, I, it feels weird to do a presentation without my staff. Anyone have it on, have it on their person? Um, nobody does. Okay, hold on. Let me just... He holds his hand out. And he looks at his watch, which is not a watch. It's like a crystal on his wrist. And it flashes some unknown no, unknown runes and such. <sighs> this is a pain. In the distance, you hear, <coughs> and uh, the the staff comes to him, and it lands in his hand. And on the um, the bottom end, there is an impaled bird. I hate it when that happens. He scrapes off the bird. And he slams it onto onto the ground and prestidigitates into the air. <sighs> Time is complicated, and it takes a great mind to conquer it as I have. Now you might be confused as to my identity. I am, in fact, Crown Prince David the Fifth from a different timeline. In my timeline, uh, everything happened exactly the same as your timeline, except my Oracle Day prophecy, well, it went a little different. I was prophesied to fail in the body, but excel in the mind. I did not take that very well. And little did I know that I needed to excel in the mind uh, when the Tarrasque attacked. Uh, Tiberius, Etheria, and... Not David. David is... King David is kind of oblivious. They... Uh, De uh, Tiberius and Etheria exchange glances. The Tarrasque is a being of ancient hunger and ancient destruction. It was the very uh, malicious force that ended the, the, the tiffs between the dwarves and the elves millennia ago. Um, what people didn't know at the time is that the Tarrasque being, uh, uh, a, a spirit, uh, uh, an aspect of hunger itself, it would reincarnate like every other aspect of natural forces. Hunger is a natural force. In small doses, it keeps things alive. In large doses, it wipes out everything around it. Uh... And Fluoride says, you guys remember what I said about uh, the Dryad, how you didn't actually kill him? She's an aspect of fertility. She doesn't die. Yes, just like that. Oh. Wait, did you do that in your timeline, too? Everything yeah. happened exactly the same, except for the prophecy. That was the difference. And there was a little difference, until the Tarrasque attacked. I swore... That I would excel in the mind once every uh, once everyone died. Well, everyone had died, and then uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting flustered. Let me. The Tarrasque killed everyone. It killed parent. I killed my parents. It killed my siblings. I was the last to survive. That's it's really great to see you again. By the way, I was very sad to watch you all die. I was. Finally king, but to a destroyed kingdom. And I did what I needed to do to grieve. Which was throw myself into the enhancing of my mind. And through rigorous study, I cracked the theory of chronomancy. With this great power, I had no idea what to do with it. What I, what should I do? What could I do with it? How could I? What, what ethical choice did I have to make? And I decided that I would come back and save my family, but I wouldn't do it alone. I brought the beasts, and he gestures to the flying turtle. I created five beasts. This turtle, there is... A, there is a drake, there is also a unicorn, a phoenix, and a typhonix. 
and together they will create a titan powerful enough to stop the Tarask. And it is my solemn quest to gather you. And he points to Scorch and Howl and Blue Moon and David. Gather you, Beastmasters of Paternia, and defeat the Tarask in this timeline and save my family from def destruction. Will you join me? And he, ho he holds out a hand and he steps up onto the turtle and that's where we're going to end. Holy shit. <laughs> and okay. that is basically the plot. Yay! Yay! Um, from now on, I am going to refer to this campaign as Beastmasters of Paternia and not Royals of Paternia because that is the actual plot and that was the placeholder name. So, I boom. love my new wonderful show of the Power Rangers, Beastmasters of Paternia. <laughs> That's, yes. <laughs> First of all, my brain went uh, after you said Beastmasters. Beastmasters of Paternia. Like... Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that was one of the only Power Rangers shows that I actually watched. Was like <laughs> <laughs> corporate magician. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna be honest. I had a moment of realization sometimes after you reminded me of the one word you wanted me to remember. Voltron. Yeah. You've made a giant. You've made a. Gi it's a giant fucking. Oh yeah, no, this is this weird, 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 weird. Yeah, Power Rangers. no, I read uh, the Bible and I scrolled down and I. I, I also scrolled down. <laughs> You saw the beast. Did you see when I changed the from from I oh wait this this is getting a little um, bonus contenty but I did you see like I I went through like a couple of different lists of what beasts to use. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I noticed you changed it after Arya was no longer with us. Yeah, kind of had to kind of had to do that. What does Owl want? Oh, I need to end the stream. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, <laughs> join us next time. Same daddy time, same daddy channel. Uh, playing Scorch, the uh, Hexblade uh, Warlock, was the uh, wonderful Window Goblin. Hello. Uh, playing Blue Moon, our bodacious barbarian, uh, Jaden, a.k.a. the Fallen, a.k.a. the Android. You know, one day we gotta trim down those names. <laughs> uh, and finally, playing Howl, the uh, tentacly tome warlock, uh, wind uh, genasi. Uh, we have Grem the Glitch Grem Gre Grem the Glitch Gremlin. I am so hyped for this. Oh boy! Join us next time for more Daddy's Dungeon. Beastmasters of Paternia!